Good morning, ladies and gents, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Chronicles. I'm your host, JBP. Man, check this out. If this is your first time on Coffee Chronicles, I want to let you know there were just a couple of random dudes who like to talk about random stuff that interest us because trust, we just love sharing information. And if that sounds interesting to you, please order a ton of I'm sorry balloons to arrive on the like button's doorstep on their birthday. Damn. Hey, we got to talk about 4D printing. This 4D printing process drives a new method to create objects that can autonomously perform movements that mimic living organisms. Yeah. Now it says here that material scientists have developed a printing technique that can transform automatically into 3D shapes mimicking living organisms. This said the same thing twice. Look at that. <laughs> and um, yeah, this paves the way for new applications in soft robotics and other tech. So this is pretty cool. You can literally grow your own designs. How cool is that? What? Let, hey, let's dive into this. A team at the University of Texas in Arlington created a new method to program thin sheets that can autonomously turn into 3D structures. That's pretty badass. The goal of the research team led by Kim Sung Yum, um, an associate professor in the university's material, science, and engineering department, is to create synthetic materials that can mimic how living organisms expand and contract. Now, work in this area is not completely novel. Uh, several material scientists have been working on the development of programmable materials through what is called... Uh, give me a drum roll, please. Yes, 4D printing. <laughs> now, this takes 3D printing a step further by creating pre-programmable objects that can move or reconfigure themselves on demand once fabricated. Damn. All right, so my point with this is, um, do you guys remember that BMW cloth concept? Uh, you don't? <laughs> Boom! Too late, your boy crooked with receipts. <laughs> the only issue, well, the most important issue with this concept is how pliable the surfaces are. Uh, pause. Before you start, we know the point of this project was not for the durability. Um, dare I say, it's merely an aesthetics demonstration for the public Purely an, a variable aesthetics opportunity demonstration for the design community. Uh, it, it served its purpose, but personally, I think it died prematurely uh, because there wasn't enough supporting tech around and they were stuck with soft materials. Now, that's not necessarily the case. All right, so I'm going to pay the image. Imagine this technology being applied to production transportation design. I'm like side A and side B surfaces able to evolve alongside with the user. Like it can potentially be very subtle. Um, like uh, if you happen to eat a donut or a hundred, <laughs> the space you're in could potentially adjust to your new quote footprint. <laughs> And vice versa, like if you start eating salads and veggies and shit, uh, and you get your gains up, it can adjust to that too. Uh, the point is that the environment you're in will be able to shift and evolve alongside with your physical makeup. I'd assume the data will be fed into the system via Fitbit, Samsung Health, uh, any type of body scan systems. And you know what? Speaking of that, um, I think if you look at the tech in Mercedes and Tesla, the seats already do a ton of heavy lifting. Um, the YouTube channel What's Inside tore up a Tesla seat and found some pretty interesting tech inside. The main one that stuck out to me was the membrane filled uh, with some type of sticky gel on the lower and, and upper shoulders of the cushions. My guess would be that the purpose is to help out with some type of sensory of how the body is positioned. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. I never worked in the seats before. Uh, I'll ask around the studio and if it comes up again, I'll bring it up. And you know, since we're on that channel, um, they also tore into a Mercedes S-Class seat and they found um, the hot stone massage system and then they showed how to work. This is pretty cool. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it, but check it out. The links are in the description. And you know, that's just the seats. Now imagine like on a dashboard or any other place in the cabin, 
and this is uh you talking about concepts that are you're not actually driver focused steering wheel is removed and it's just you in the cabin or the office space that gives an immense amount of working area and opportunities that you could exploit i'm all for it i'm all for it all right so this could be a this could have other applications depending on how long it takes for the environment to shift it could turn out to be uh you know from an adult space into a child space i know this is a bit more ambitious but you know we can still dream the whole point of being a designer is to take stuff to the extreme Equally, the whole point of being an engineer is to cross those dreams that we have. I'm kidding. A little bit. I'm sorry, not sorry. And I didn't forget about product design. This could have major opportunities here too. Now, specifically the medical field. Like imagine if you had a cast and it could adapt to influence the growth of our specific habits. No more one-time use. We can start having answers to benefits we didn't even know was part of the equation. Some of that unknown, unknown action. That there are known knowns and that there are known unknowns, but there's also unknown unknowns. Things we don't know that we don't know. What? Now, this 40 printing is really one of the reasons that makes me very happy because uh, it kind of highlights the whole reason why we're doing this crappy conical stuff. Um, because the whole point is as you're going through your day-to-day -day activities and you know searching for inspiration searching for something that's not mundane and the average everyday stuff you know after doing all the speed forms and all the sky stuff you want to be grounded in some form of possibility now this tech i know it's far out but still, the whole point is that we're supposed to push the bar along. And if we're not pushing it along, then you're going to see a lot of the same stuff, which is what we have right now. We got to change that. Our generation in the field, we got to mix it up a little bit. We got to take over. So I like that y'all use this as a calluses. I know I am too. Like I'm, I'm doing this research and I'm a, it's affecting my designs too. So it's we're all together pushing it along. Yeah, I like that. That being said, if you guys check out the description, uh, we have linked the 4D article. So you can deep dive into it, find out more nooks and crannies that we haven't talked about. Cause we're talking purely surface level right now. Um, so yeah, be inspired, let's get it. Hey, a uh, quick shout out to Unreal Engine 5. Yes, <laughs> we love it, they love it. Y'all see me loving it. You, you love it. Uh, even if you never heard of it or used it, they, them, us love it. The hype is real, no cap. Uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to dive into this update on my home station just yet. But when I do, I'll throw the results up on here. You know, let's talk about it. Hey, but listen, um, if you stay here this long, I appreciate you and I love you. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and post notifications to catch more of our random thoughts and our other videos. <laughs> this has been Coffee Chronicles with your host, JVP, and we out. Peace.